Hello everyone. Thank you for joining my session to discover more about Azure toolings and utilities. My name is Elena Lee, Cloud Solution Architect of Microsoft focuses on applications and infrastructure. This session, I will give you an overview on Visual Studio Code and Azure extensions. In addition, I will cover Azure Cloud Shell and Azure PowerShell. I will wrap up this session with ARM template and comparison between ARM template and Azure command line interface. Before we get to my agenda, I would want to give you a brief overview on high-level Azure services. Azure is basically a bunch of data centers. Microsoft built infrastructure as a service and platform as a service onto it. We also offered a lot of management and security option. Today, I'm not going to cover everything on the slides, but I would like to introduce you toolings and utility to better manage your services. One of the tools that you can use to manage your code and Azure environments is Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is one of my favorite apps to edit my code and write my scripts and also manage my Azure services. Visual Studio Code is a free cross-platform open source editor that you can use to write or debug your code. Bear in mind that this isn't a Visual Studio. Instead, it is just a lightweight test editor that is part of Visual Studio family. Visual Studio Code supports tons of languages and you can add extensions onto Visual Studio Code. Have I mentioned it is cost platform? Visual Studio Code works with Linux, Mac, or Windows OS. Visual Studio Code works with dozens of languages, in, including Python, JavaScript, Swift, C Sharp, etc. So basically, if you have any languages that you're comfortable with, you can use it with Visual Studio Code. The reason why Visual Studio Code is so awesome is that it delivers a very rich coding experience to you. It supports syntax highlighting of your languages that you won't get in the plain old text editors. It also supports IntelliSense sense that Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code will intelligently complete your code based on variable types, functions, definitions, and important modules. Visual Studio Code does more things. You can add a code into it, debug, source control management, and open a terminal right from Visual Studio Code. It is also very highly customizable. You can make it look like, uh, you can make the experience how you want it to look like. You can choose between color schemes, icons, and different fonts that is comfortable for you. And we have extensions of almost everything in Visual Studio Code. If you can't find anything that you are looking for, you can actually build your own extensions. We provide documentations and templates that give you a jump start in creating your very own extensions. You can edit codes right from the editor, and there, there is integrated source control management to manage your code right from Visual Studio Code. There is a feature called Live Share in Visual Studio Code that you can actually collaborate your, code, your works with others. Others can work in, in your code, and you can actually share your code with your teammates. You can customize the look and feel of your editor, including all the icons and themes and key bindings. And you can actually, you can even add code sleep mat, sleepless onto your Visual Studio code. We have extensions of almost everything. If you find a programming languages that you want to work on, 
you can it is there is a very high chance that you can find an extension for your programming languages and there is even extensions of extensions so basically it, visual studio code is trying to help you to have more efficiency in developing your codes Let's get to a demo of VS Code. This is how VS Code looks like. I've already have a markdown file opened. If this is not a markdown file and you are working in another programming languages, you can actually change it from the right hand corner. You can change from markdown to other languages that you are working on. In addition, if you don't like a color theme now, you can also change it by using Control, Shift, and P. And, we'll, and you can search color from here. From here, you, you will get live preview on each of every single themes will look like. But I like the default one, so I'm going to save the default. In addition, VS Code has a great nice integration with Markdown file. There is a live preview features with Markdown file. For example, if I if I'm changing something in the in the file now, for example, I add welcome to Azure Fundamental. And you can have a live preview on what you are working on in the Markdown file. Also, if you if you have noticed, there is a nice file system view in the left hand con left pane. In here, you can actually search a keywords from the file names. For example, if I'm gonna go through CSS. You can see CSS is being highlighted in the file system view. On top of that, VS Code also support searching inside a file. Let me go to the search here. And now, instead of searching H1, I'm going to search H2. In this way, VS Code is searching inside the files. You can see all the header tools has been highlighted and H2 is being highlighted in CSS as well. VS Code also supports source control management. You can connect it to your Git repository. In addition, you can control how the code will be committed and stage before committing and stage before committing to the Git. In addition, I've mentioned debugger, debugger is also available in VS Code. Because I don't have any applications currently opening, so there is no debugger available for me. In the extension pane here, you can actually search the extension that you like. But before I, I search my, for my extension, I would like to see how many extensions that I've already enabled in this instance. You can see I've ne I have enabled 20 extensions currently. If you want to work on a new language, for example, I would like to work on Node.js, and you can actually search for Node.js here and find all the extensions that is related to Node.js. In addition, when you click on the extension pack, you can actually see who is the author of the extension and how many people have already downloaded this extension. In addition, there is a rating system inside the extension, so you would know this is actually a really good extension to install. If you are working with Azure, I would like to introduce you with some Azure Toolkits. It is available as an extension called Azure Tools.
In my environment, I've already installed Azure Tools in on it. You can see there is an Azure icon here. When I click on it, it will connect to my Azure subscription and grab all the information that is regarding the uh, integration in, that is integrated with Azure Tools, including API management, app services, Azure functions, and storage. As you can see, I have several app services already deployed onto my subscription. In this demo, I've already deployed an Azure Fundamental 30 demo site on the, onto my subscription. If I right click on it, I can actually browse the website right from the Visual Studio code. In addition, the app, app service integration allows you to change your code and deploy your code right from Visual Studio Code. Let me go back to my editor here. I've already had the HTML5 already opened, and this is the same website that, that I've just shown you. For example, if I add another heading here, And I add hello a from 30. Afterwards, and I save it. And then when I right click on the project, and you will see there is an option to deploy to our web app. And of course, it will want you if you really want to deploy it. Yes, I really want to deploy my apps onto Azure. And you can see there is an output windows for this. And you can see there is a, it is creating a zip package and starting the deployment on Azure. Let's wait the, for the deployment to be completed. All right, it is completed. And now I go back to my website. And you can see it is already changed with my, with my previous edit. In addition on deploying to the app, to the web app, Visual Studio Code also integrated with the terminal experience. You can you can press Control Back Tick to trigger the integrated console. There is multiple uh, flavor that you can you can choose from. In my environment, I actually got a bunch of different flavor of console installed. You can actually change it using select default shell. And it will show you which default shell that you, you want to use in the next terminal opened. In addition to integrated terminal, VS Code also integrated with Azure Cloud Shell. You can press Control Shift P and search for Cloud. And you can open the bash in Cloud Shell or PowerShell in Cloud Shell from Visual Studio Code. And now I'm going to open a bash in Cloud Shell. Right. Now I'm going to query all the VM that I have in my subscription. Let's see, AZ VM list. Let's make the output table. And now it's just showing all the VMs that I've already deployed in my subscription. Next topic that I'm going to cover is Azure Cloud Shell and Azure Command Lines Interface. I've just showed you a bit of a sneak peek on the Azure Cloud Shell. Azure Cloud Shell is actually a browser-based shell experience to manage and develop your Azure resources. Cloud Shell offers a browser-accessible pre-configured shell experience for managing your Azure resources without installing anything on your PC. In addition, Cloud Shell provisions machine on a per request basis, and the, the and the machine state will be will, will not be uh, persist across session, but will be persist your storage across different sessions. 
Azure Cloud Shell is supported in two flavors, Bash or PowerShell, that you can choose the one that you are comfortable with. Azure Cloud Shell have multiple access points. You can access it right from the portal, Azure portal, and you can directly go to Azure Cloud Shell using shell.azure.com. We've also offers Azure Cloud Shell experience right from our Azure documentations. If you are on the go and you have Azure mobile app installed, you can even trigger Azure Cloud Shell right from the Azure mobile app. And I've already, lastly, I've already shown you how VS Code extends with Azure, Azure Cloud Shell. Azure Cloud Shell also offers tons of options. You can choose between Bash or PowerShell. And it's also provide an integrated Cloud Shell editor in the, in the Azure Cloud Shell experience. Because there will be a storage um, deployed with Azure Cloud Shell, the home directory is actually persistent across session. So you can install different extension and client onto your Cloud Shell sessions. There are some pre-configured and installed client in the Azure Cloud Shell, so you don't need to install another Docker client onto Cloud Shell. It also supports .NET Core and Python from, right from the Cloud Shell. Let me show you how Cloud Shell works. After you signed into Azure Portal, you can access Azure Cloud Shell from the Cloud Shell button here. After you click on it, Azure will provision a Cloud Shell session for you. All right. From the session, you can actually switch between Bash or PowerShell experience. In addition, you can upload and download file from your browser. Apart from accessing it from Azure portal, you can also directly go to shell.azure.com to access your Cloud Shell environment. Let me jump back to the Azure portal experience and switch from Bash to PowerShell. With a simple click, it will be switching from Bash to PowerShell experience for my coming demo. I hope you are using Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal also integrated with Azure Power Cloud Shell. You can access Azure Cloud Shell from the drop down menu here and select the tenant that you want to access. Afterwards, uh, we will be going to the Visual Studio Code here. And now I'm going to show you how Azure Command Line Interface interact with Azure subscription. First, I will be using this command to create a new resource group. I'm going to paste it here. The resource group will be named a My ACI Demo, and it will be located in East US. And next, I'm going to create a new container instance. This new container instance will be located in the My ACI Demo resource group that I just created. And then it will be named my container with an image of ACI Hello World image from Microsoft. And the DNS label will be called ACI demo A30 with a unique number. While we are waiting for the container instance to be created, let me introduce you about Azure PowerShell. Azure PowerShell is supported on PowerShell 5.1 on Windows. 5.1 is only supported by Windows OS. If you are using Linux or Mac OS, please install PowerShell 6.x to enjoy Azure PowerShell. Azure PowerShell also works in Azure Cloud Shell. I've already showed you. I've already shown you how to switch between Bash and PowerShell experience on Azure Portal. Azure PowerShell is also frequently updated because we have new features and new solution on Azure. Please keep the Azure PowerShell updated to enjoy new features. And now I'm going to switch back to my demo session.
Let's go back to the Visual Studio Code. I've already have PowerShell script enabled. Let me check this. Let, let's check the status of the previous deployment first. Going back to the Windows Terminal Azure Cloud Shell session, and you can see the container instance is already created through Azure command line interface. You can actually grab the FQDN here. And paste it onto the to your browser. And you can see it is connecting to the Azure Container instance. And next, I'm going to create an, another container instance through Azure PowerShell. Let me copy this command and go to the PowerShell session that I have opened. This PowerShell command will be creating a new container instance in the same resource group. The name will be different called my container Porsche with a new DNS name. All right. While the container instance is being deployed. I'm going to show you how Azure, Azure Cloud Shell and how Azure Cloud Shell work with the normal bash command. Going back to the bash command here, you can see we are trying to echo the container IP through um, Azure Cloud Shell command called AC container list and query the IP from the result. Let me copy these two command and going back to the Azure Cloud Shell. Right. Now you can see that there are two IPs because another IP is being created for the new container image, container instance that I just created to Azure PowerShell. In Azure PowerShell, there we can achieve the same thing through a different command. Get AC container groups, and then you can search the name, and then search the name for the container, and select the IP to sh for for display. This is how Azure Cloud Shell and Azure PowerShell work. Next, I'm going to walk you through what is Azure Resources Management Template and how it will, com it will it compare with Azure Command Line Interface. Azure Resources Template is, a, is an interface for managing and coordinating your cloud resources. Think of the ARM template as a way to deploy your cloud resources. If you're familiar with Azure Resources Group, you know that they enable you to treat a set of related resources as a single unit. You can organize your resources group. You can organize your resources in the resources group and let you deploy and manage and delete all the resources together in a single action. A resources manager template precisely defines all the resources manager resources in a single deployment. You can deploy a, a ARM template into a resources group as a single operation. An ARM template is a JSON file, making it from a form of declarative automation. Declarative automation means that you can define what resources you need, but not how to create them. Put another way, you define what you need, and it is resource manager's responsibility to ensure the resources are deployed correctly. You can utilize one single ARM template for many environments. For example, if you if you have a dev environment and UAT environment, which is exactly the same with the production, you can actually grab the production template and deploy it, deploy it into your UAT and dev def def environment. Why should we use ARM templates then? Using ARM template will make your deployment faster and more repeatable. For example, you no longer need to ask your operator to create a VM in the work portal and then create the next VM and so on. 
ARM templates take care of the entire deployment for you. ARM template also help express complex deployment. It enables you to deploy multiple resources in the correct order. For example, you don't want to deploy a virtual machine be before creating any OSDs or a network interface. Resource manager maps out each resources and its dependent resources and create dependent resources first. Dependency mapping helps you to ensure that the deployment is carried out in the correct order. The template also reduces manual error-prone tasks. You no longer need to manually create and connect resources because it is really time-consuming and it is easy, errors will be easily happen there. ARM template ensures that the deployment happens the same way every time. Templates also express your requirements through clocks. Think, think of a template as a type of infrastructure as code, and that can be shared, tested, and versioned like any other piece of software. Also, because templates are code, you can actually create a paper trail. When you change the template, the, if you have if you change the template and you have a Git repository and um, Git source control. Its version, its revision history will be documented, and you can know how your template is, has evolved over time. Using an ARM template also promotes reuse. Your template can contain parameters that are filled in when the template wants. A parameter can define a username or password, a domain name, and so on. It enables you to create multiple versions of your infrastructure using the same template. Finally, the templates are linkable. Resources Manager template can be linked together to make the template themselves modular. So you can write small templates that each define a piece of solution and combine them to create a complete system. You can define templates that describe each individual component, for example, compute, storage, networking, and so on and then combine them to meet your operation needs. Here are some of the terms that you will hear about when you are dealing with ARM templates. For example, ARM template is created as a, it's written in JSON and it's a readable language. And there are different terminology when using, when creating an ARM template. I'm, go, I'm gonna go in through them one by one for you. The first one is parameter. Parameter is where you specify which values are configurable when the template is one. For example, in, in this parameter session, we define when doing the ARM template runs, user will be, will be um, filling in the admin username and admin password. The admin username will be stored as a, as a string, and the admin password will be stored, stored as a secure, secure string. The other terms is variables. Variables is where you define values that are used throughout the template. So you don't need to, when there is a change, you don't need to change them one by one. Variables can help you make your template easier to maintain. For example, you may define a storage account name one time as a variable and then use that variable throughout the template. For example, in this session, you can see the variables of the nickname is my VM nick and the address prefix is 10.0.0.0 slash 16. ARM template also support functions. Function is where you define procedures that's, that you don't want to repeat throughout the template. Like variables, functions can help you make your template easier to maintain. Here is an example that create a function to create a unique name that could be used when creating resources that have globally unique naming requirement. As you can see here, it will grab the parameter from name prefix and then and then get a suffix for the for the un, for, for a generated string that will be unique across um that, that will be unique. Resources is the session that you can define the actual, the actual Azure resources 
that make up your deployment. In this example, it will be this ARM template will be creating a new public IP address. You can see the type of uh, the resources that is going to be deployed is public IP addresses. And the location will be the parameter will be grabbing the parameters in the location. You might notice there is an API version here. It's very useful because Azure update our API um, in certain period of time. And you want to make sure that your ARM template can be run according to the API version that it is written. So if you define the API version here, while the ARM template is run, it will be using the exact version that you define here in Azure. So you so when Azure Azure change over time, your ARM template will still still be deployed in the correct order. Lastly, this is the output session that you can define any information that you not you would like to receive when the template runs. For example, in this uh, in, in this session, you may want to receive your VM's IP or FQDN. So this example is actually illustrating an output named hostname, and the FQD, FQDN value is read is read from the is read from the VM's public IP address settings. Compare between ARM template and Azure CLI. Basically. Both methods can have can generate the same resource. In this example, you can see on the left hand side is an is an ARM template, and the right hand side is an Azure CLI script. And both methods is creating the same deployment. However, when comparing with ARM template and Azure CLI, ARM template is for the identity. And this can be used. Uh, it uses JSON and can be difficult to write. And Azure CLI is not all components are um, identical, except for the creation. So when you when you run Azure CLI multiple times, it might generate different results. So if you want the same results of, uh, through times, you should use Azure ARM template. Azure Compound Line Interface uses a scripting language, which is relatively easier to write compared to ARM template. However, you can you can download an ARM template from Azure portal, and after you ma manually creating a resource, and templates can have lots of lines of code and multiple files. Hence, it is a little bit complex for st for starter. Both ARM template and Azure CLI can give you the same results. As you can see in this example, on the left hand side is an ARM template, and on the right hand side is an Azure command line interface script. Both methods is achieving the same result, deploying the same resources. And when should I choose between ARM template and Azure CLI? ARM template is fully identical, which means when you run a, an ARM template for multiple times, it should generate the same results. However, it uses JSON, and sometimes it is hard to write. Because of that, you can actually download a template after you manually creating resources. For example, if you're creating a cluster of VM, if you want to de deploy the same thing on your UAT environment, you can actually export the template right from Azure portal. ARM template can have lots of lines of code and multiple files that will be easy to deploy a really complex environment. Azure CLI is not idempotent except for creates. That means if you run Azure CLI com commands for multiple times, it might generate different results. However, it is using a very easy scripting language and it's easier to, to write. And it is also easier for developers who are familiar with the code to write and iterate. But if you are deploying a really complex environment, the lines of code will be really, really long compared, compared to ARM templates. But my, 
But my opinion is, why not both? You can deploy resources with Azure Resource Management Templates and the Azure CLI. Let's get to a demo for ARM template. Going back to the Visual Studio Code here, I have my parameters file open. As you can see, there are several values that I'm going to store as parameters. For example, new storage account name and my SQL password. An ARM template will be stored as an Azure deploy.json. In this JSON, there are parameters that I'm going to define. The value can be referred back to your parameters file. In addition, there are variables that I'm going to define, for example, public IP addresses, address prefix, NSG name, etc. In the resources section, these are all the resources that I'm going to deploy. For example, I'm going to deploy a new storage account using a 2015 API version. In addition, Dependency can be also defined inside the ARM, ARM template. For example, the virtual network will not be deployed unless there is a variable called NSG presence. An ARM template can be very complex and large, and it might be hard for you to visualize it. That's why I'm going to introduce you with a very, very cool, cool extension. This extension can be found in the extension marketplace. It is called ARM Template Viewer, written by Ben Coleman. And this viewer will help you visualize your ARM template. Because I've already have this extension installed, let's get back to the ARM template. As you can see, there is an eye icon on the top right hand corner. Let's click on it. Now, a visualization of the ARM template has been generated. You can see there is a virtual machine, and there will be extension installed in the virtual machines. In addition, you can also attach your parameters file into the ARM viewer. For example, I'm going to attach the parameters file that I've just shown you. As you can see, the parameters has already been imported. After I click on the virtual machine, you can see the username is tied back to the parameters file. Also, you can read all the details that the ARM template is going to be deployed the resources for you. Finally, if you want to store this as an image, you can download it right from the ARM template viewer. Next, I'm going to show you how to export your, the ARM template from the Azure portal. As you can see, when I go to a resources group, for example, the resources group that I just recreated previously, and then in the setting session, there is an export template option. Go into the export template option, and you can see it will automatically generate an ARM template for you. For example, if I copy this ARM template onto the Visual Studio Code here, you can also see the ARM template viewer is actually changed dynamically according to what you've written on the what you have already written on the on the JSON file. This is the last of my of my demo, and this is the and hope you enjoy it. That will be all I would like to share with you today. Hope you find it useful for your day to day job and operation. Now we will head to a Q and A session. Please feel free to ask me anything regarding VS Code and Azure Utilities. Thank you.